The electric guitar, often described as a block of wood, six wires and some electronics. They've been around since the late 1930s and really the formula hasn't changed that much. It begs the question, how hard can it be to make one yourself? A question I asked myself and well let's find out. So these are the guitars that are in my collection currently. They're professionally made from the likes of Manson, Fender, Ibanez and Harley Benton. They come in a range of sizes, shapes, colours, what have you, but really they are just different blocks of wood, six wires a piece and a bit of electronics. How hard can it be? For over the last 10 years now, there's a design for a guitar that's existed exclusively in my head, bar a sketchbook that's gone missing somewhere. For all that time, it's just been in my head, sitting there, not really developing that much, but apart from the a few vague ideas. In the last couple of months, I've been able to realise that dream and develop it, and in today's video, we're going to have a look at it, if it's really a dream, or if it's actually a nightmare. So with all of that out of the way, let's have a look at it. As you can see, this is the body of a Jaguar, the neck of a Telecaster, including skunk stripe, um, some P90s, a single coil, a master volume, a master tone, a five-way toggle switch, and a kill button. And as we've just proved, it really is not that difficult to put a guitar together. Thank you everyone, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Okay, let's look a bit deeper. Um, okay, so on the surface, yes, body of a Jag, Telecaster neck. Why? Um, I really like the Jaguar bodies. I've got two Telecaster guitars already and at this point in time I didn't really fancy going for another one. I've always liked a Jaguar body even before that recent fad of having them has come about. They are very interesting to look at, great for access and you know, up until fairly recently you didn't really see that many of them. I much prefer a headstock with this sort of layout and quite a kind of a slim profile i.e. the Telecaster headstock. 22 frets was non-negotiable for me. Um, I don't like guitars that don't have that 20 second fret. My Strat unfortunately only has 21 frets and it's a bit frustrating to play it sometimes when you just like damn I wish I had that higher fret. The main thing in that design from over 10 years ago now is this pickup arrangement and some of you will know the inspiration for that is this guitar. For those of you who've watched my channel for a long time you'll know that I cover a lot of Muse content and I do really admire Muse as a band and Matt Bellamy particularly as a songwriter and a guitarist himself and the design work of the guitars that he has is really truly quite interesting and the people over at Manson make some brilliant guitars for him. I don't know if the pickup arrangement for that was his idea or if it was theirs. Um, he's not the only guitarist or certainly not the first guitarist to have a pickup arrangement like that but it is truly interesting and I wanted to have a guitar that at least leaned towards that kind of nod to one of my guitar heroes and also it looks quite interesting and also because in in the case of a strat where you have that middle pickup in the more traditional location i never thought it sounded that good and with this well there's a lot more going for it i would say for those of you who pay close attention to what i have in my guitars i do really like p90s my telecaster has an mbk1 in there which is basically just a slightly modified mississippi queen from bare knuckle and my ibanez has an actual Mississippi Queen in the neck. I do love P90 tone, uh, it's a lot more ragtag than a humbucker and a lot more beefier than a single coil. They are my preferred pickups to go for and really they are the first type of pickup that I go for when I'm wanting to jam or play a song or write something, anything at all. My Telecaster usually is the first guitar that I'm going for because I know that it can pretty much do everything I want it to bar one or two things which are quite specific and specialised which is why I wanted this to be loaded with some interesting P90s. So that's it right? That's everything we've covered. Or is it? Earlier in the video I said that this is a five-way position switch. That was a bit of a lie. This guitar has a ten position switch which means I have all the normal positions that you'd find in a strap but with then some interesting combinations there above in position 6 to 10. And in the course of having this guitar made and working with the people over at Bare Knuckle, they actually made me a wiring diagram and helped me articulate just kind of how I wanted these pickups to kind of go. I went from wanting two supermassives in here and using a 
three-way toggle switch to just get those sounds that I wanted, not really knowing that I could really push that boundary even further. Before we go any further, I just want to go over what really is in this guitar. The body, which I'm sure some people might be quite interested in, um, I did not cut the wood myself. I had a company make this for me, which is guitarbuild.co.uk. I contacted them, said what I wanted, and it was more than doable. They do classic Fender body type guitars, so T-style, S-style and your J-style. And they were more than accommodating, they were brilliant and they got the body out to me pretty quickly. It's a two-piece alder body, um, the wood was really smooth, there was absolutely no issue and it was an absolute delight to spray paint it, which um, brings me on to where I got the kind of the minor hardware, the paint and some of the screws and the back, the neck plate and uh, the housings for the strings in the back of the body all came from Northwest Guitars. They were brilliant in sending things right to me really quickly. They were tip top, brilliant. Uh, definitely want to give them a shout out. Um, so if you're wondering how, if you have broken guitar or you want to replace some parts or wire, just to see how you can get some accessories for your guitars or just want to have a peruse, absolutely have a look at Northwest Guitars. The neck came from a guitar anatomy. I found I was really struggling to find a neck that I thought was suitable for what I wanted and particularly those knees are 22 frets and a rosewood board. So I went for that neck and I thought it was great when I installed it um, but I had to sand all of the finish off because it was really quite orange down to what we have here and then put some kind of wood stain and sealer in that really really easy to do it was actually a joy to do it just took an entire day to sand the neck down but it was quite therapeutic the other bits of hardware which is the tuning machines and the volume and tone knob control came from Manson Goto machine heads and these are the kind of titanium or aluminium uh, knob pop control things that, that they sell on Manson and a low profile but quite wide control so that it's really difficult to miss when you're wanting to turn the guitar down or turn, turn it up or what have you. So yeah, that's pretty much everything kind of covered. So with that, all of that out of the way, let's have a look at these pickups. So the pickups themselves are from Bare Knuckle Pickups. They are two P90s and a single coil in the neck. The neck pickup is a flat 52, which gives you, if you ask me, that classic Telecaster neck pickup sound. So that without question had to go in there. And then moving on to the two P90s in the bridge and those pickups are in the bridge bridge it is a super massive p90 and in the almost bridge it is a nantucket they are two different types of p90 they have different kind of frequency responses so they don't really tread on each other's toes so that means on their own they have their own space to breathe but when together they can pair up quite well they are um, fantastic pickups that are in here the super massive is the pickup that I knew that I wanted in here from the start. I'd read some reviews, I'd looked at the kind of specs and listened to some demos of it, and it really captured my imagination to want to throw it in here. Originally I wanted two, then I was talked out of that because it might be a bit too much. The Nantucket is a lower output pickup, and kind of when I have them both together, that might have been an issue. So it might have been too powerful, might have been too much power. And from my own experimenting, they sound great. So with all of that said and done, I'm going to show you some sounds. So before I play any of the guitar, I'm going to go over the 10 position switch and really what that really means in real terms. So we have the normal, traditional five positions that you see in a telly. So it's bridge, bridge, middle, 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 neck, neck. And on the top, it is, let me try and remember this, in series, these two pickups, then this one, all three pickups in parallel, then moving over, it is the bridge and neck in series again. Moving it up again, it's the same pickups, the bridge and the neck in parallel. And then finally at position 10 is the middle and neck in series. I'm gonna use my Timmy Overdrive for this part of the demonstration and play a riff and then play in all 10 positions quite quickly and you'll make up your own mind. So, I need something to play.
that was a quick demonstration of all 10 positions roughly with a bit of crunch. If you were interested, the pedal, it was just the gain at 12 o'clock and, and the kind of tr treble at 2 or 3 and the bass at 12. Let's take it a little bit further. Everyone who knows this channel well um, should know that I like a fuzz tone. So let's kick on some fuzz and see what that does. So we're going to kick on by Big Muff and my fuzz factory. We're going to start with the neck position and just see how this goes. <laughs> And the bridge. Position six. Straight away, position six with the fuzz tone really eliminates a lot of the kind of the higher frequencies and keeps that kind of low gruntiness kind of going on in there. It really depends on the type of music that you're playing. If you want that, but with well, to my ear and the pedals that I've got, this position sounds really interesting. I'm going to take that a bit further with this and add in some whammy. We're going to change up what pedals are being played slightly. So we're taking out the fuzz factory and bringing in my prime distortion. Just the bridge. I'm sorry I got a bit carried away. Let's have another look at how these pickups can be combined but in a different way. So we're gonna look at the traditional position two setup which is these two pickups but how you'd see it on a strap. Same riff. <laughs> Let's take it down, put to a crunch again, really see what we can pick out. Instantly you can tell it's a lot more nasal, a bit more like your traditional Strat sound, plus all the things that we've seen this guitar can do so far. Really at the moment this is kind of sounding like a telly put through the abilities of a Strat. Plus, just more things can go in there. So to cut everything short, um, that's a quick introduction to the Jellycaster, which I've aptly named as it's a Jaguar and a Telecaster neck. We've just scratched the surface of what this guitar can do, what it sounds like. We've seen what's in this guitar, we've seen what makes it up. We know what the wood is, we know what the electronics are, we know what the pickups are. Really, we've yet to scratch the surface properly on this, and if you want to know more about what this guitar can do, what it sounds like, where it's going to go, just stick around, I guess. I've been Harry, and thanks for watching. Thank you.